Welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to boost the current on these type of drivers. That is a Q light right there. Sometimes they're called Nang 105C and just different things. Any of them that have those 7135 chips on there. And I'm going to show you how to how you can stack more chips on there to get higher current and how to avoid shorts when you're doing that. Okay, on this type of driver, each of these little chips on here uh, is going to let about 380 milliamps of current pass through it. Uh, the old ones were 350 milliamps apiece. These newer ones, 380 most of the time. So every one of these that we add is going to add about 380 milliamps worth of current. You can see here... I have one already already hooked up here. It's soldered to this, which is an uh, XPL high on a nice heat sink, and I've got my clamp meter. Uh, it's in front of the driver board around the LED negative. Um, this one, with this driver, it's linear, so you could actually hook anywhere in the circuit, but most of the time it's better to hook up here, you know, if you're using a buck driver or something. Anyway, we've got... Uh, clamp to the rim of our board, our battery negative there, and in the center we have our battery positive. And we're just going to double check and see what our current is in each of the modes right now. Okay, so in our low mode we're getting about 30 milliamps. Medium about 760 and high we're getting 3.15 amps. Okay, now when we add those chips on top of that, um, you'll get 380 more milliamps on your highest mode. It's not gonna add 380 milliamps to the lower modes, but it will add a percentage because as you go up, the lower modes are just a percentage of the output of the high mode created by PWM. In order to obtain our extra chips, what I usually do is just take dead burnt drivers that I've got laying around and remove them from those. You can just order them from a few websites though, they're not very expensive. The next thing you want to do is take a pair of needle nose pliers and bend all three of the pins on that chip over till they're pointing straight down. Now that we've got that done, you want to bend that center pin back and forth until the end of it breaks off and looks like this. Once you've got everything lined up, just grab something to hold the chip in place with, tin the end of your soldering iron, and solder the backs together. For the back side, I like to switch from the large soldering tip to my fine point. Having removed that extra pin from the center is going to give us a lot more room to work with and significantly reduce the chance we have of getting shorts while we're soldering this together. If you'd like to learn more about good soldering techniques, I have a video you can see linked in the top right of this video. Okay, time to see how we did. Okay, 
Oops, time to set the meter to the correct setting. Okay. There we go. And let's check our lower modes. Up to 50 milliamps there now. So not too much change. 80 milliamp, 800 milliamps, sorry, uh, on the medium mode. And 3.45 there. Okay, now you can add as many chips like that as you want. You can just keep going up and up and up, just like we did. Um, the only limits are, of course, how much space you have in uh, your pill, and also how much heat sinking you have. You can't just leave that driver floating in air like that. It worked fine for a minute, but after about a minute, that driver will start to get really hot, and no matter how many chips you do or don't have, the current's going to fall like a rock. It just, like, it even makes that noise, okay? It's, it's not good. If you're, you're heat sinking, the transfer from the board to the uh, metal on your flashlight is good, then you'll be okay even as you've gone up in chips. I'll post links in the description to get the parts that you saw in this, and also if you want an awesome clamp meter like I've got there, I'll post for that too. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. Good lucks. Thank you.